This series takes us back to Wittmoskloof, a large farm in South Africa's Eastern Cape, which I hold very close to my heart. In previous videos, I have come here with various different air guns and hunted a variety of small game animals, both for food and for pest control. This time, however, things have changed. South Africa is in the middle of one of the worst droughts in its history, with browsers and grazers left with almost nothing to eat and many animals dying of starvation. With each square meter of land vitally important to the survival of both the livestock and the game, it's important that the numbers of unwanted animals be carefully controlled, and that's where we come in. With the help of two friends, I'll be spending a few days shooting problem animals with both a PCP air gun and a 260 Remington, and documenting each day's events. Come along with me and let's see how things play out. So basically, we have everything we need right here in the Oxwagon camp. The only thing we don't have is electricity for charging uh, cameras and for the, the compressor which we're going to use to refill the, the air tanks. But other than that, we've got everything. So we're really set for the next few days. Uh, we're going to be staying in the Oxwagons, that's where we'll, we'll be sleeping. We're going to be cooking mostly at the fireplace. But inside we've got hot water with a gas geezer. We've got a, a nice cold freezer. So that should keep us going for the next five days. Nice, there you go, hey? Two single beds, a towel, beds with sheets on them, we all sorted. Our first priority was to get some food in our stomachs, so out came the jaffle makers and lunch was on its way, or so we thought. Our cooking was interrupted by the sound of baboons barking on the mountain outside and so we put lunch on hold and out came Luke's rifle. After glassing the rocks for a few minutes we spot a baboon sitting on top of the mountain. Luke reads the conditions, Ready? gives me a firing yeah. solution and I take the shot. I see the baboon go down and it's job well done. These baboons are without a doubt number one on our hit list this week with their strength and their destructive nature resulting in water pups being ripped up, houses being raided, and lambs and kids being killed. Well, that's how men make lunch. <laughs> we were just busy beginning to put the jaffles on the stove, and we heard the ominous barking of a baboon. And we were told actually um, by the people who, who run this whole place, they said to us, be careful because the baboons like to come and raid the camp. And they obviously saw us arriving and decided to come take a look over the mountain. And usually I would never take a shot at a silhouetted animal if you're not sure what's behind it. But I know the outlay of this land really well. And I know that there are literally no houses for kilometers and kilometers and kilometers. There's just nothing for a really long way behind there. So I was, I was pretty comfortable taking the shot. So we continue on our merry way cooking jaffles but are interrupted once again by the sound of more barking further along the mountain and it's straight back to business. Luke gets an opportunity at about 490 meters, quite a bit further than my shot but the wind call is just a little off and the shot passes just to the right. You can see just how many baboons run off here and what makes baboon hunting so difficult is that every single time you take a shot, the rest of the troop gets a little bit smarter. It's a never-ending battle. The replay shows just how close the shot was. Well, after finally getting our lunch cooked, we make our way up the mountain to find the baboon I'd shot. These aren't animals that many people eat, so normally you just leave them where you shoot them as a warning to the rest of the troop, but we were curious oh, yeah. to see where he'd been hit. Right, well we found um, the rock that the baboon was on, it took us a while to find it. We've got a lot of blood right below me here, at 295 meters from the, uh, from the kitchen, <laughs> where we were cooking our jaffles. So it's just a matter of time now until we find it. Uh, so I don't know if you can see here, but that shot was really, the placement was really bad, just really low and far back. Um, we got the we got the range horribly wrong. 
ranging from here to where the kitchen is shows about 100 meters more than what we thought when we originally ranged which means that the rangefinder must have picked up a tree or something in front um, of the baboon and got that wrong so the shot drifted a little bit low but thankfully we're using a, a round that is made for um, just rapid expansion it's a really good hunting round so on its way through it just did enough damage and this thing must have bled out within minutes because um, yeah the blood trail is really intense it only went four meters so not a great shot on my part but the job is done and I'm happy with that. With the temperature soaring above 40 degrees Celsius on the first day, we made our way down the mountain and decided to spend the afternoon relaxing at the camp. We do a little bit of animal spotting from the ox wagons and it's really great to see that despite the drought, there are still a good number of mountain reed buck in the area. This part of the country is known for its mountain reed buck and it's a real treat to see them so close to the camp as we wait for evening to come. Fast. You think so, eh? I reckon it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, if something's worth doing, you might as well overdo it, eh? <laughs> Fire's going outside. Just making some coffee quick because it's coffee and what is sitting around a fire without coffee? <laughs> Definitely What is it about sitting around a fire that's so great? I think people are just mesmerized by it. Glorified moths. <laughs> <laughs> Many people think that the shooting part of it is is the most fun, but I think that sitting around a fire comes comes pretty close. It's one of the things that you remember most when you go on your hunting trip, and that's why we're including all this this footage right now. Um, it's part of the story. It's not just about going out there and and shooting stuff. It's about spending time together as friends, uh, just enjoying, you know, being out away from away from the city, away from civilization. We are far away from the closest tar road and it's really great to just come out here and kind of cleanse your mind of the junk that, that comes with a busy city living. Um, all three of us are from a city with about 1.3 million people so yeah, although we do get opportunities to come out and hunt like this, our day-to-day -day lives aren't quite as uh, tranquil and peaceful. So we're definitely enjoying the moment while we can. I was watching a video the other day of the top reasons why Peta is the worst. One of them was they wanted to buy an old jail and turn it into a lobster empathy center for all the lobsters that lost it. <laughs> <laughs> and they wanted to rebrand fish as sea kittens to make them less appealing. <laughs> Imagine if you're walking here and you think the door's here and you walk and this impales both your eyes. That'd be a worst way to go blind. Well, Imagine if you like, if have to tell your if uh, that, doctor now I went blind because I walked into a if a that impales <laughs> if that impales both your eyes, you might your head structure must be like Sid the sloth, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like a parrot. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, like on the side of your head. <laughs>